Hey, what's up guys? It's Eli and uh, I've got another video for you today. Um, surprise. And uh, we're talking about like submissions from Butterfly Guard. Butterfly Guard is generally known as a really good sweeping position. In fact, I would argue it's one of the best sweeping positions. Uh, it's one position that really helped me more than anything else understand sweeps from every kind of guard. Um, but it also has kind of a target rich environment sometimes for submissions. And so these are some of my favorite submissions uh, from Butterfly Guard. Um, and by favorite, I mean some of the only ones I've ever hit. So when we get here um, in this position, now Butterfly Guard, I'm, I'm looking here like this. Basically my feet are on the inside, his feet are, his legs are on the outside. Typically he's on at least one if not both knees. Um, I can have an underhook on either side, overhook on either side, but I need some combination of the two. Uh, typically double overs is not very good, double unders is good. And, uh, but we're gonna kind of take it today because we are in the gi, I'll show some options that might or might not uh, be gi applicable. So whenever we get here, I'm gonna kind of have a staggered uh, position like this. I wanna get my underhook on the side that's forward. So if this is my upside knee, I'm gonna get my underhook on that side over here. If he's got a belt to grab onto, that's great. Um, otherwise, I can come up here by the shoulder or just kind of palm the back depending on how good of a control and what he's doing with his arm. I like for my head to win the inside position. I don't like for his head to be under mine because he's gonna flatten me out then and then my butterfly guard is trash at that point. So I wanna have my head inside here like this. Plus, whenever I do this, it makes Alex's beard look like a wig for me. So that's, that's kind of fun. So when we get to this position, I wanna suck this arm up like this. I don't want him to post out on this arm uh, typically because I want my sweep. That's what I'm going for uh, above and beyond everything else. I don't typically uh, would recommend um, starting butterfly guard position with submissions in mind. They're kind of incidental, but they're, not, they're nice to have in the chamber whenever a sweep is, uh, fails or you want to have a combination. So to grab here, I can grab the material or I can just grab here by the tricep tendon like this. I can also grab by the sleeve on the wrist or by his wrist. I like typically to get this because sometimes I can get two points of control and that isolates the arm better. I've got this hand in his back here like this. I'm winning the inside head position this way. I want to try to sweep him off into this direction. So one of the first ones I want to look for off of here is the arm crush. I think it's one of the most readily available ones and I think that it's a really good submission. So since I have my underhook established on this side, if he knows where we're going and he try, he does manage to get this arm out over here to post, then that's uh, that yeah, shuts down my submission here, or I'm sorry, it shuts down my sweep, but it doesn't do much to protect his arm. So I'm gonna hug, hug up nice and tall here like this. Once I hug up on this arm, I'm gonna slide down his tricep. I wanna get the bend of my elbow to the back of his elbow right above it by that tricep tendon again. And then this foot here, I'd like to go to the inside by his hip. Once that makes it here, I'm gonna to start to connect these two hands as I go down to this shoulder. And as I do this, this knee is gonna come up to the top on back, the back of his shoulder over here this way. And I'm gonna squeeze these two knees together as I crush the arm in like this and connect my ear to my shoulder through his wrist to isolate the rotation of his arm, take that out of the way, and then hug tight. And then I get that, that nice, uh, He's a Gatami there. Also looking at this underhook side, what we can make happen over there if he gets this arm out. Again, this is a failure on my part because I didn't isolate the arm well, so I'm not getting my sweep and he's shutting down the angle that I need to really execute that sweep. So whenever uh, we get here, if I am going, he starts to pull that arm out like, once again here like this and I lose that arm, then again, I have this, this uh, underhook on this side. I'm gonna hug up tight, high here on his shoulder. And from there, I want to take this inside leg here first up to his back so that I can put some weight on it over here. Like once I have that, I'm kind of posted on my hand here and I put the weight on this side. Now I've got the weight distributed between that leg and that hand to pull this leg out. And now I can come up, get a nice bite on the outside over here. Uh, and then once I have this set up, it's not too many steps to be able to turn and finish setting up my triangle on this side over here. So once with the underhook on that side, getting that, it helps me to pull that arm across and center that arm up so that his shoulder uh, is, is kind of uh, not exposed there so I can get him tight and funnel up for that triangle. So again, on this one here, once he pulls his arm out this time, I'm gonna hug up tight on the shoulder because I feel like that opportunity is available. I'm gonna post on this hand. I wanna throw this leg up first behind his back. I wanna shoot this leg up and through, get the nice good bite on his neck. And then as I go to rotate on this side, whether I'm hooking in here like this, this leg is gonna come around. And again, I wanna get that good angle. Both knees are facing the same direction here. And then I get that tight squeeze for the triangle. And this arm has already pulled his arm across. 
If I can catch Alex here like this and he's kind of playing head forward a little bit, not with the best posture in the world, then we can play instead kind of a collar, a collar tie or bicep tie kind of grips like this rather than just overhook or underhook. Um, from there, I want to try to steer him one direction over here like this. And I can even get the sweep if I'm really doing a good job on this uh, bicep tie over here to get the sweep like that. But from this, I typically get a reaction if I try to steer him this way of him wanting to steer back the other way. So whenever I feel that reaction here, I can slide up and catch to the back of his head. Now, from there, I'm going to snap this in this way here. So I'm scooting my butt forward a little bit. My, this little strip of pec right here from shoulder to, to uh, pec right here is going to the back of him here like this. And so this could be uh, anything from a guillotine choke to like a handgun kind of choke here like this. But since we have the, the collars to work with today, once I snap down, I'm feeding my hand to the inside collar over here. So we snap here like this, the inside collar. And from here, I wanna get this and I wanna dive this arm through and I wanna dive my head right behind it. As I do that, I let this leg pass through so that when we come in here like this, I can get this rolling kind of uh, lapel or I can get this kind of rolling wing choke here like this. What this hand is gonna do at this point here is it's gonna stretch out toward the mat here like this, so I'm kind of spear handing. This hand here is gonna stay nice and tight inside of his gi. I'm trying to be nice to Alex while I'm talking. And then I'm gonna go kind of perpendicular belly down on this side over here and come up to my chest. So it makes for a really nice, tight, winding choke. So one more time on this one. We're kind of starting this one here for more uh, collar and bicep tie. I lean him this way here. He starts to float back that way. I snap his head down and inside. I get this grip here on the collar. Sometimes just the finish is right here some, uh, every once in a while. But I can go here, dive this hand over, and it's gonna snake through to the back of his neck. This leg is gonna pass through and I'm gonna tuck my head under his body here like this. So that whenever we come up, I wanna go belly down. I wanna keep stretching my arm for a wedge underneath his head. And then here, so what's happening underneath his head here is this kind of motion makes a lot of pressure on his neck. There's different kind of configurations, like I mentioned before, that we can play typically over under is kind of the gold standard because I want to start this out, all these in a sequence of starting with the sweep and then see his response. But they, these can be anything from the bicep collar tie like we had a while ago to double unders to even kind of wrist controls like this. So something that we can do if I start out on kind of a wrist control here, whether it's double or single wrist grabs like this, is if I can get an arm drag off of here. So what I'm doing is grabbing the outside hand, grabbing on the wrist. This hand is gonna shoot nice and high by his uh, tricep. And if from here, the, the way you make a powerful uh, arm drag from Butterfly Guard isn't just by staying stationary and trying to pull him because now it's just a tug of war and a strong guy with a good base is gonna win that. But if I scoot myself toward him, that kind of tends to uh, uproot him a little bit and it puts two forces reacting to his one. So that is gonna give me a little bit better of an arm drag. So what I wanna do with that is once I make this arm drag here, this way, is I'm gonna shoot this hand up and try to catch. Now, again, since we have the collar, I could go inside the collar here like this, or I can just catch on the back of the neck. The thing that I like about this one, uh, other than it being gi and no gi applicable, is that this sets up a nice kind of uh, modified darse choke here. So once we get to this position here, I wanna shoot this hand over the back here. I wanna push down with my tricep so I get his head really in the pocket, and then I wanna connect for this kind of rear naked style choke like this. So what's gonna, uh, to finish this though, I don't wanna stay here and have him play tug of war and try to pull his head out. Instead, I wanna let, allow my leg here to come across. This is my inside leg, uh, my left one here. I'm gonna let that come across. And then now from here, I wanna fall to my left side. And as I do that here, this way, you can even come up to the top position here and then finish from the top for that Darsh choke that way. I think that's a really good finish. You can finish it from underneath as well, or from that seated position. But typically, getting him on his side, or especially on his back with me on top, is a little better. So once again, on this one here, again, I'm gonna play this kind of wrist control here. I wanna make this nice arm drag. I wanna catch up here like this. I wanna grab here, set up that dark show configuration. The foot comes across. I'm gonna flip him over, and I'm gonna ride the momentum up here like this. Now, once he's on his side on this position here, I wanna drop my hips in, squeeze, and get that dark choke like that. Um, so we've looked at several upper body attacks from here. I've lost count, but it's a few. And now we're gonna look at a, a couple lower body attacks that I like a whole lot off of this here. So um, again, we're gonna go back to this kind of standard configuration because I wanna set this one up off of the sweep because now instead of him uh, getting his hand free and posting out with his arm, he's gonna look to post either on his knee or on his foot. First, we're gonna look at what happens if he posts on this knee and the other leg begins to float. 
So from here, when I go to sweep from here like this, I don't do a very good job. I, I managed to get this leg elevated on the side. It's kind of floating, but he's got a, a little better base. Maybe he even got that arm out in addition to that leg as well. So from here, the, the uh, thing that we're gonna look to do, I'm gonna take this underhook from this side. I wanna swim it across his body here like this. And then I'm essentially gonna do a grand B roll. So from here, we go up this way here. So my leg is hooked inside like this. At this point here, now I can reach up and I can grab that knee that I see here. I like to grab both legs, pull him close to me so that now he's really uprooted. And then whenever we roll over, we can land right into this nice knee bar position this way. I'm gonna cross my two ankles. I wanna come up here. I wanna put the flat of his foot between my ear and my shoulder on this side here, grab the heel, butterfly grip with the arms, drive my hips forward, and then look up toward the ceiling this way here with the heel while my head stays heavy on top of the, the top part of his foot. So one more time on this one. When we get here this way, I start to sweep to this side. Alex is basing out at least with his leg, maybe even with his other hand. So I'm gonna go here, I wanna do a grand B roll. I need to get my arm to the other side like this. And once I get upside down, I grab that knee here like this, pull both his knees toward me and connect, drive up and over with my feet. And then we lay down right into this knee bar. I wanna grab the heel, pinch the foot here like this so I've got rotational force and force of the hips straight into the knee like that to get the finish. This one's gonna be similar to the previous one, it's just a different way to attack the leg. And this is honestly one of my favorite ones. I think because it just pops up in a lot of places and this is one of my favorite places to hit it from. So whenever we get to this position here like this, I start to try to sweep Alex. He bases over here like this and I'm elevating the leg here in such a way that his legs kind of like hanging and dangling out here like this, right? So as, as he's here like this and I managed to get myself underneath him, maybe I'm already on my side so it's gonna be a little harder to invert. But what I can see here with this configuration with my shin kind of behind his knee is now if I extend my bottom leg here like this past, so my knee goes past his shin, and then as it pulls up, it brings his, the bottom part of his leg with me. So now if I connect here like this for the figure four, this is already starting to be a nasty calf slicer. If I just go here and I start to hug on his thigh, I might be able to get the finish right from there. But if he yields to that pressure because it's really painful, then he starts to lean toward his uh, left side here. And then I can ride up to the top position here. If I get this cradle on this side over here, I'm trying to be nice, but if I get that cradle, I can get a nasty calf slicer finish right there. Even if I can't, then just getting that top pressure like that a lot of the time can get that calf slicer finish on that knee. So it's really, really a painful one. So once again on this one here, as I get to this position, I start to make that sweep. His leg is kind of dangling this time here. So I want to pull myself in deeper, gather up that leg here. If I need the hand assist, it's there as well. I want to figure four of the legs here like this. Try for the calf slice or finish from bottom by hugging, connecting my hands around the side or turn it into a sweep, right up to the top position. Just use it for the sweep if you're nice, but if you're not very nice, then you can just drop your hips right here and get that calf slicer on that. Actually, it's more of a ham sandwich. It's not really a calf slicer because most of the pressure is gonna be the back of the knee and the hamstring, therefore making it a ham sandwich, not a calf slicer. But those terms are typically interchangeable. All right, so there are some uh, really nice uh, submissions from Butterfly Guard. So that uh, whether your sweep has failed or whether you just wanna have something in a one-two combination where you can threaten the sweep and then go for the submission, those are some good options to have. It's always nice to have kind of backup plans and to have combination attacks like that so that you're a little more guaranteed or a little more insured to get one of those things to work. So hope you like these. I'm sure that I left a lot of different submissions out, but um, I gotta keep this video kind of short. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching and I appreciate all the support. Make sure that you follow me on uh, Patreon as well. And uh, you can become a channel member over here if you want to do that. So uh, I appreciate you guys always watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that kind of stuff. And keep watching my Jiu-Jitsu channel.